I've been shopping and I've purchased everything we need to make tips with an acrylic overlay. Stuff that you can do at home. I'm Susie and here with me today is Paige and we're gonna do this together. Let's get started. So with tips, half of the work is really kind of done for you. You don't have to use a form. The tips are already made. They come in a little kit like this. And this particular ones, these are white. And I've got the nude. That's what we're going to use on page today. You can see the difference. These are very nude in color. And that's what we're going to work with. But I do want to show you the white. So I'm going to show you it on her nail and how they look. We're going to go for a nude look today, but if you're looking for the French white, these are very effective as well because the French line is already cut in for you. That's one of the hardest things to do when you're doing acrylic nails is building that French line. But you can see if I lay it right on her nail, see how beautiful that is? The French is already done for you. But I'm going to select a nude color and sometimes when you put the nude colors on top of the French white tip, it sees right through it. So we're not going to do the French today but we're gonna do tips, so I'm pretty excited. I've got five fingers I'm working with. I've prepped all of them. She's washed her hands, we've sanitized, and now I put the tips on four fingers, well, three fingers and a thumb. And then we're gonna do the index finger. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you do wanna prep it. I saved that part for you. You wanna take a file. Now, when I was at the Sally store, I bought all the stuff there. None of this is for my professional collection. This is all stuff that you can buy and I'm gonna recommend this file. It's a 180 medium grit, so use it still very gently on the natural nail. So I use the kind of the round tip. That's quite an advantage when you're trying to work in that cuticle. That's what we're gonna do now. So very gently, you can go in circular motions, and all you're doing is removing the shine off of the natural nail in every little corner. Don't press too hard. It's one thing I can't show you on camera is the pressure, but it is just ever so lightly. You can see my skin moving just a little bit, just ever so slightly, okay? But you do want it to get into every little corner because if it's missed and it's just still the natural nail and it's a bit shiny, the acrylic won't stick to that part and it could lift. And in the world of nail lifts, that's huge. Even though it's a little area, it's a huge lift. You don't want that. So we're just gonna file it. So ever so gently, just give it a nice file. There we go. And then you wanna take a little duster and just get rid of the dust. So the product I'm using today is called Beauty Secrets. That's what they had at the Sally Salon and I wanted to buy everything you could use. So this is what I grabbed. So I do have the nail liquid that goes with the system. This is the monomer. I put this little glass dish too there so you can put your monomer in it. Okay, so now we want to put the last tip on. And when you're sizing a tip, it's really important in how you do that. You don't want to do them a little shy because all these products shrink just a little. So you'd rather have your tip a little bit bigger than a little bit too shy, right, of the sides. So this is, they come in sizes and they have a little number listed. That's a four. The lower the number goes, the bigger the tip is. So this is a three. And you can see, I'm just going to show you the difference in the sizing. You can see this is just a bit big. If I press that into her finger, it's just a little bit big on the sides. And you don't want them to look big and wide. And then if I put this one, which is a five, you can see I have to press it in. And it does go away to the side, but if it shrinks a little, it's going to be a little tight. So the four, I think, is a better size for her. I could just nicely fit it in there and it goes right from side to the other side of her finger. You can see it fits in there quite nicely. So here's my glue and it's a brush on glue and I'm just going to take it I'm going to put it down. You got to be kind of speedy at this point. You want to put your glue in the well and then you want to flip it over and see that little ridge in there? See that see-through part? You want to fit that right under her nail and you want to press Hold it for a few seconds, and then it should be happy. Okay, so we don't need these guys. Now with the tips, obviously those are too long. <laughs> so you've had square before, right? Yeah. And you would like a different shape. What shape would you like? Almond. We're going to go for almond today. Okay, cool. 
So these are, look at these things. This handy tool is a tip cutter. I mean, you don't have to have it because you could take a hand file and just file it down, but that's a lot of extra work. So we don't want them super long. So I always ask my client, what kind of length would you like? Are you want them on the longer side? I mean, mine are really long. You go to school, what length would you like? Mm, not too long. Yeah. So maybe just like this kind of shape, but maybe not quite as long, but still yeah. got that kind of look. So if I think of it that way, I want the point of my almond, the point of it to come in my mind, I'm going to say maybe to about here, right? And the sides are going to taper down. So I'm going to take my tip cutter and I'm going to put the nail in there and I'm going to take a good look from the top. Make sure I measure it right. Give it a good squeeze. And this one even has it where it catches it <laughs> right in the end. It doesn't even go flying. <laughs> okay, now you don't have to do it totally perfect because you can shorten it up again later. But you want to get each and every one of them cut off. So you don't have to deal with that extra length. You don't want to have to put the extra product on there and you don't want to have to file it if you don't want to. And then I'm going to take the thumb down. Okay, so that's getting a little bit better. Now we're going to apply acrylic as the overlay on top of these. So what this does with the tip, it actually just removes the whole form process. You don't have to actually fit the form and custom do it. If you don't know how to do forms, this is a great way to get the shape of the nail already down without having to form it. Before you put the acrylic or gel, whatever overlay system you're using on top of these, the tip must be filed. So you wanna get your file again, gently buff the surface of the tip. It's just too smooth for anything to stick to properly. So we just wanna buff the surface of the tip a little bit. So you wanna do that to all of them. You could pre-buff the tip, but they're hard to hang on to. It's much easier to buff the tip when it's actually glued to the nail. And this is prepping for whether you're doing acrylic or gel. Now it comes the shape. She wants to have them almond. I'm going to cover these completely in acrylic for strength because these are just not strong enough. These are really flimsy. These are really bendable. They'll break off in a second. So we want to put an acrylic overlay. In doing so, there's no point in putting acrylic overlay on top of this whole square long nail. So I might as well shape them now, which would take off the ends quite a bit and allow a lot less product to go on it. So I'm going to shape them up now. When you're filing a nail that's kind of on the long side, Hold the client's nail bed like that, really tight, just like this, so that they don't feel that vibration. It feels really gross if you don't hold it. If you just watch, you can see it just kind of, you can see the natural nail moving back and forth. That doesn't feel good. So if you hold it, you can put much more pressure on it to get that nail shaped up much easier. Tips file very easily. Look how fast you can just file that right up. That doesn't take long at all. So these still are probably a bit long, I would think, for her daily routine. So sometimes you don't know how long it is until you kind of look at it. And what do you think, Paige? I still think that's a bit long, eh, yeah. for whatever you do? So I think we can cut off a little bit more on each and every one just to save all the extra filing. Really just taking off a tiny, tiny little bit. So let's check this out and see if she likes that. I always do this with a client just to make sure to get the shape that they want. Sometimes in doing that, you discover that they want another shape or that they described it wrong or it doesn't really look as good as they thought. So it's really kind of good to determine this before you continue all of them. What do you think? Is that looking a bit better? Yeah. A little more doable. So I just took off a tiny bit. So I'm going to just take it off the ends a little bit just to save ourselves all that extra filing. Yeah, and look at that one. I think that looks way better. And this is like almost like a little too pointy. Yeah, 
Yeah, that looks way better. Just filing them a little bit where they've joined. See if I can get rid of that seam a little bit just to make it look a little bit more seamless. The tip file is really, really easy. So you should be able to blend that tip line. See the diff? See those two tip lines? I just blended this one a little bit more than this one. So I'm not sure the coverage that the pink is gonna have. So I wanna blend that tip a little bit more. So we just want to make sure there's no dust on there. And then we want to take your primer. You don't want to oversaturate that nail. You just want to make sure that it's in there, but not flooded. Don't flood that cuticle. And you don't have to put it on the tip part. It's really meant for the natural nail. Okay, now brushes the most important tool of the trade, in my opinion. I've got a couple of different ones here. One of my favorite shapes and that sizes is the Oval 8. That's what I have here. And again, I bought this right at Sally's. It's got that packing stuff in it, so you just have to take it out. And I bought another size brush. Actually, this is just different shape. This is a square brush. So I'm excited to see what this pink is called extreme pink. Let's see what it looks like. I've got the clear too. I don't know if we'll need it, but I just wanted to be prepared if we, in case we do. Okay. So I'm going to use the oval eight. And I'm going to, I've got my monomer over here, so I'm just going to get my brush kind of ready for the liquid. And I'm going to go in my, with my first bead. Now this is of course product you can buy at home, but working with acrylic actually takes a lot of skill. So if you're trying this for the first time, I wouldn't recommend you do it on a real person. I'd recommend you do it on a piece of paper or a fake hand or a fake finger, but be warned, it's hard to do. <laughs> it takes time. I do have a lot of videos on your liquid to powder ratio and you might want to check that out as you're trying to form this bead. So I'm going to go into my pink powder and I'm going to collect my first bead. Ooh, it's really pretty. And I'm going to put that right there. Now, if you're first learning, I wouldn't start with a bead this size. And I'm going to press that bead. The whole idea is to make that cuticle nice and thin and then work that bead over the entire tip. This tip is not going to be strong enough on its own. So it must be fully encapsulated or covered with an acrylic or gel, whatever you are using. It must go over top of the whole thing. It's very pretty. Very nice. Now placing that, I mean, it looks really easy because I know what I'm doing, but it takes years of experience to do one bead like that and put over top of the whole nail. And there's so many things that are going on, such as the cuticle has to be smooth and flush and the arch has to be in the right spot and the free edge has to be at a right thickness. And I feel like that's pretty good, but even with the knowledge that I have, I'm still gonna look at it sideways. So on that, you just wanna make sure you've got that nice arch in there and that looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna look down the nail this way to make sure that I've got a nice thick enough coating, not thick, 
but thick enough to span over top of that tip area to make sure there's enough strength here. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna break down this nail a little bit more as in maybe three beads. So here's the first bead and we'll do that near the cuticle. Just put that little guy right there. And then we only have to really manage this one bead. So we wanna get rid of that excess so it doesn't dry real thick on us. But we wanna focus on this cuticle area and we wanna make it nice and flush. This is one of the hardest things to do. So if you can't get this, don't be hard on yourself. This is really tough. And sometimes you might think it looks great, but if it's too flush toward the cuticle, it can actually look good if it's matching the cuticle, being this is the cuticle, this is the acrylic. And if they're together like, like this, that means this is too thick going up to the cuticle height. It looks good initially, but when it grows away, you've got this big, huge ledge. So we're trying to get it to go this way. We don't want it touching. It's just kind of right against it in a very smooth way. Okay, so I'm gonna look at it sideways. And I don't know if you can see, the cuticle's great, the apex is getting kind of thin, and the end of the nail, of course, over the tip, is super, super thin. So there's no strength there whatsoever. If you compare it to the first one, look at the diff. So you can see the thickness. I'm not saying it has to be thick, I'm just saying it has to be thick enough. Tips are not thick enough. They're too thin to be strong. So we're gonna put another bead in here and bring it right to the full end. So I'm gonna bring the second bead and I'm gonna put it right in the arch area. And I'm going to flatten it right down, creating a nice smooth transition from the cuticle and I'm gonna bring it all the way out to the free edge. Honestly, that was probably a little bit too big. And you can see that it's that much too big, so I've just took it right off. Now I can file this, see when I'm going in here and I'm kind of feathering that. If I have time, I'll do that, but if I'm compromising the rest of the nail, I won't bother. Because I can actually do that by hand, right? I can just file that later. But I want to make sure that there's enough thickness in the end to shape up nicely and make sure that this is nice and strong. There we go. So if I look down the barrel of the nail, you can see that these two have enough thickness that they won't break. And if I'm going to compare it to the tip, I don't know if you can see that, See how thin that tip is? I'll put my brush on this so you can see the top of the tip. It's very thin. If I put my brush here, obviously that's a bit thick. If we can file that. I put my brush there, that's a little bit more just right, this one. You know, it's not much. It's just a little bit to make it strong. Okay, we're just gonna keep going until we fill all these guys up. Now, if you wanted to have kind of an ombre look, you could do this kind of design and do clear from here on to the end. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do a full pink nail. See, but as I'm working, I'm always getting rid of liquid. Always dabbing it off in my paper towel. It's easier to work with a dry brush. Now I do find this brush, it doesn't hold its shape. Keeping in mind, this is not a professional brush and it's harder to get the stuff out of it. So I'm gonna have to take it out with my finger. I really am noticing the difference, I will say, for a good quality brush. So that's maybe something that's maybe a little frustrating if you're buying a cheaper brush. If I was gonna spend some money, I, I would spend more money on the brush. Yeah, 
just kind of Okay, I just need a little tiny bead for the pinky. I'm going to add some more paint to that, but it's still wet, so I'm going to go right to the thumb. It is nice to get the brush kind of a flat shape, and you're literally putting it in between the person's cuticle and your product, and you're sort of doing it, like you see the same flat brush, and you're going all the way around the side, kind of, kind of doming it like that. And you're just patting it and patting it and gently pulling it out at the same time. Remember guys, this is not easy to do. It's an art, it's a skill, just like any other trade. You can't just slap it on. I'm sure you've been to places where they just slap it on, but it takes a bit of time to learn how to do it properly. Okay, so we've got the cuticle pretty good, so I'm gonna do another bead. Maybe I'll do a bigger bead and we'll take care of the arch in the center all the way to the end. And again, the more of a giant bead you have, the harder it is to control. So if you take 10 little beads to get where you're going, that's totally fine. Definitely do that as you're learning. And as you get more confident, you can get bigger ones and bigger ones. But don't try to do that right away, it's very frustrating. to the pinky because I just needed to add another one. That's probably a bit big. This brush seems to collect a lot. I took about a third of it off. And you could do that. If you get a bead on there and you're just like, that's just too big, just cut some of it off and take it right off. Double check, you just want to look down all the barrels of your nails and make sure they're as thick as you want before you start your filing. And sometimes I'll take a quick peek on the side. See that nice arch? That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that guy. And sometimes I'll just give them all a quick check. Make sure I got everything that I need. Okay, so at the end, now you don't really want to touch this, so I'll show you the proper way to do it. At the end of it, sometimes I do this so rarely because I don't, I have really good quality brushes, but I will literally kind of do this, but I'll show you the better way to do it without touching the brush all the time. If you touch the monomer all the time, you can develop contact dermatitis, which is like a reaction to the product. You don't want to do that. So I will take a cuticle stick and I'll just feather it out gently and see if there's any product that's stuck in it. Now this is just a fluffy kind of brush. I was a little skeptical at first because there was a few bristles that I lost right away. You can even see some on the paper here. So I get the monomer, just kind of soak it with the monomer and I'll roll it. If it doesn't twist nicely together, there might be some stuff in it. I think I got it all out. But see how it's not really keeping a point? A really good quality brush keeps its point. Okay. When I'm storing it, I do keep monomer in my brush to keep it happy, like conditions it almost. But don't store it like this inside one of these containers. If you store it like this, all the old liquid that you're working with, well, it's not old now, but it will be when it runs into the barrel here and then it sits in there and then you come down to work with nails the next day or so. When you go to work with it, all the product is now old 
it runs back out into your brush. And when you go to put it on, it'll turn everything yellow. It looks terrible. It's just contaminating completely. So just roll it up like that. Keep the monomer in it and lay it flat somewhere. This one doesn't have a cap. I usually like brushes that have caps. Okay, just get rid of this. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Get rid of this paper towel because you've got all the odor. The monomer is inside here and it smells awful. So do you want to get rid of that? And then you want to throw that garbage can away if it's bothering you at all. And I'll put the lids on these. Well, I've dumped half of it on my towel. <laughs> this happens sometimes, but I don't really, I mean, it's tempting to want to take that and put it back into here. But if there's any dust filings that I've had on this towel from probably filing it before, which it probably is, it could get back in here and like, cause a problem. So I wouldn't put it back in there. I would just get rid of it. So on that note, sweetie, I'm just give me a second. I'm just going to dump this into me little garbage here. Now I got pink powder all the way down there. <laughs> okay, so now the good part, the fun part, we're gonna file. So of course I picked up all the files that you can get to some more filing. So we can use this one again, the same one that you use for prepping, we can use to do the shaping. Now the shaping is a little wonky now because I have put a bunch of acrylic on it. So we can just tighten that up a little bit. Now you should just go down the sides and I just reestablish the exact shape that I want. Now they're gonna feel stronger now. So when we're filing them, they're not gonna feel as vulnerable as they did when they were just the tips on there. Filing is kind of hard to show. Again, you can't feel the pressure and there's so much depth that you're missing when we're doing the, the videos. But I wanna show you if you look down the barrel of it. So what you're looking at is the thickness all the way down and through. And then when you look at it sideways, you can see how lumpy or bumpy or smooth in what areas, and you can see how thick it is on the end. So I'm gonna take my file and I'm gonna file on an angle to take this top side down this way. And then I'm gonna file this way to take it down so that when I look down it, it comes to a smooth kind of dolphin nose point. So it's all about the angles of your file. See that? Now it's starting to come down. And I'll do the same for the other side. And then around the cuticle, and be very careful, you don't wanna hit the natural nail. You can see the way I'm holding it. I tend not to do it this way because my fingers just get in the way. But this way I can really get a grip on the person's finger and I can pull back quite a bit. The skin, I don't wanna hit those, so I'm gonna pull back quite a bit. And a lot of times I hit my own nail, like look, I'm hitting my nail right now. <laughs> but this way I can keep that kind of rock in motion going across the top and keep the real roundness of it. It may look like I'm doing it flat, but I'm only doing it one section and I'm, and I'm going round because I'm going kind of fast, okay? And if I'm going flat like this, I'm always moving and creating that roundness at the same time that I'm going like that. Then you sort of take another look at it. You don't want to go too far. The last thing you want to do is add acrylic, which you can do, but you don't want to go there if you don't have to. I've already thrown my paper towel away. Sometimes it can be a little ridgy in there, so you just wanna, I always have my finger there to protect their skin though, right? So if I'm feeling it on me, I'm getting close enough, but I'd rather be on me than on them. So you just wanna file that nice and smooth in there, because polish will settle between those two ridges. That looks dreadful. So you wanna make sure you're kind of filing it in there. I'm looking down the barrel of it again and making sure that it's gonna have that nice, non-thick point to it. You want it to be dainty. She's a tiny girl, her hands are really dainty, it's very feminine, so you don't want it to be thick and bulky at the end. My goodness, if you dropped a loony or a toonie, that's Canadian money, I know it sounds hilarious. <laughs> if you dropped one, you wanna be able to pick it up, right? Your nails are super thick. It's not gonna get picked up. And forget about a dime or a nickel. Just forget about it. Okay, it's looking pretty dainty. Looking good. Just 
just give a little bit more of an almond tip there. And then I'm gonna take this particular file, and that's the 400 to 600, and we're gonna smooth it out quite a bit for polish. If I put polish on this, oh, you'd see every little scratch. But we wanna file it right out nice and smooth. Which one's the smoother side? This one, so we wanna use the rougher side first. And we wanna smooth every little spot. This will not shape, and this will not take away any product. This is just smoothing it to take away all the rough lines. And you will see any type of scratch on there if it's, oh, it's looking pretty, it's pretty good, pretty smooth. So we're gonna flip it over and do it on the other side and this will make it nice and smooth. And you can't feel it, you can't, I can't share that so much, but if you just feel how smooth that is, feel the rough one. And then feel this uh -huh. one. Isn't that nice? Now watch this. Once you put the oil on there and you smooth that right in there. Look at that. That just looks like a beautiful natural nail. So I'm going to finish up the rest of these and then we're going to do some polish. So we're just polishing these up. from their Vinyl Lux line. Maybe this one's called Uncovered. even pretty just with the one coat. Yeah. It's really gentle. Okay, so we're just gonna top coat this and then we're gonna check out the reveals of almond. You've never had almond before. Nope. <laughs> Let's check it out. So if you're wanting to try some tips with an acrylic overlay, don't forget the glue. With a little bit of practice and watching some videos of mine help you with liquid to powder and how to do tips, you can create these too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks Paige. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey!